Oh my gosh. Oh, that is a Bible verse in case you don't know that. Um, that he who is inside of me is greater than he who is in the world. And we need to remember that because there are times that he does not want us to remember that. Not our God, but that other guy. And he tries to make you think that he's greater than you are. And that could be that he who is inside of you is greater than he who is in the world. And he runs the world. That's one of the things that God did was he sent it down to you. So, um, communion. Wow, this is the time we need to remember what Jesus did for us. Without him, without that power of one person, we would not be saved. We would not have anybody between us and God. And what happened is what God what the Bible says is that we are not righteous enough to stand in the presence of God. And what happens is Jesus is he's our defense team. It's like if we went to court. Jesus is the one that's saying, I know this person. I know things happened. I know things went wrong. But let me tell you about this person because Satan is the prosecuting attorney. And he's standing up in front of God and saying, look at what this person did. Oh, didn't quite stop at the stop sign. Oh, he talked bad to this person. Look at how he's treating other people. Look at what he's thinking. And Jesus says, yes, but all of that's forgiven because of me. And that night that Jesus was betrayed, he was sitting around his disciples. And what he did was... He took the bread and he held it to the heavens and he blessed it. And then he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Because he wanted us to remember what he did. Then in the same manner, he took the wine and after he had blessed it, he offered it to his disciples. And he said, take, drink of it, all of you. This is my blood shed for you. This is the blood of the new covenant that Jesus created a new covenant for us between us and God. And it's our job to live up to that covenant. So take. He said, I have $150 million worth of projects inside of me, but it takes giving to do that. Do you realize that China is the second wealthiest, the second most prosperous group of people in the world? And do you realize they have billions of people there? And we have about 300 million people in the United States, and we are the most prosperous place in the world, right here. We also give more than any other country in the world. We give more to missions. We give more to help people than any other country in the world. And we have less people than any other country in the world. The Lord didn't give us wealth, and he didn't give us prosperity. What he gave us was the power to do those things. 
And one of the things that I found more than once since I've been a pastor is you can't outgive God, and that's the only thing in the Bible that says go ahead. God says go ahead and test me. Go ahead and try. There's people in here that have tried to do that. And they can't outgive God. And it's incredible when you follow the Bible and when you learn about what God is doing and what he does for us. I honestly believe that we're in the promised land. We have almost everything that we need here. I'm not sure of anything that we don't have within our borders. And it's all awesome. And God just sits back to see what we're going to do with all of it. So let me see what we've got going on. Whoops. I didn't put my picture in there today. I know it's in there. I must not have left it. But anyway. You forgot. Yeah, I forgot. I was even trying to think of which one I put in there, but I'm not sure what it was. So anyway, we'll go on with the sermon. Oh my gosh, um, the power of one. You know, I have seen that happen so many times. When one person steps up, one person steps forward, and one person reaches out to other people. And next month, we make our voice, our voice known again nationally for the first time in two years. November 8th is voting time again. They say that it's a very important election. And I've heard so many things from so many different people about elections and voting. I've heard everything from the election is rigged to my vote doesn't really count. And if that's the feeling, what I do is I see people ask, them, ask themselves, then why vote? Why get out and do that? I'm just one person. I'm just one voice, one voice. But all it takes is one. It only takes one person. It only takes one person to heal someone. It only takes one person to take another person's hand. It only takes one person to vote and change the world. And one of the things that I found is in Proverbs 24.10 is that if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. And if you want to turn that around, if you don't faint in the fates of adversity, your strength is strong. And that's what God has promised us. And the other thing that God says is he will not render, will he not render to each man according to his deeds? And I've seen that. And, and I see people who call themselves Christians and then I watch their life. And I watch how they're living their life and they can't understand why their life isn't going right why it's made a turn, why things aren't going the way they're supposed to. And I sometimes wonder, are you living your life according to the word? The other thing that I've heard is I've heard elections being lost by less than the number of people in this room. In 2020, over 20 million Christians, 25 million Christians did not vote. They stayed at home. That's your right. That's your right to go out and vote. That was enough people to change the election, one way or the other. And the other thing that I ask myself, and when I talk to people, I can kind of see, who do you listen to? Who do you listen to when you're finding information out? You listen to your neighbor? You listen to the mainstream media? Do you listen to alternative, alternative news? Do you listen to those whom you want to hear from? Or are you listening to God's voice? Are you listening to what God says? Are you listening to that still, small voice that's trying to permeate the noise? Because the closer that we get to November 8th, the more noise you're going to get. Because people over the last several months have found out what you want to hear. And they're starting.
starting to tell you that. It's your time to decide those things. So where do you stand? Are you willing to get off the couch and stand for something? Are you willing to stand for that still, small voice of God? In Council Bluffs, we stand for the less fortunate. We stand for the homeless, the elderly, the vulnerable. We stand for the people who need that little bit of extra help. Are you willing to face a giant and do as God has asked you to do? Now the thing is, is I only know what God tells me to do. I don't know what God tells you to do. You're the one that has to listen for his voice. You're the one that has to put the noise aside and say, what is God asking me to do? Only you know, but what I do know is we need to listen. We need to listen to what God says. Listen to that still, small voice that is telling us the difference between right and wrong. Not just make a decision based on whether we like or we dislike someone. Because, you know, even Satan appears to be likable. He was the angel of light. He was the good-looking one. The best looking one. The kind of one that makes everything look okay, even though something inside the still small voice is saying, you shouldn't be doing that. That really isn't okay. When I see younger people having to take on two or three jobs just to make ends meet, or people going hungry who have always had plenty, that concerns me. And the reason I know is I have a 23-year-old daughter. And she was doing just fine. And now she's having to work two jobs. And I'm, there's another guy who's been in and out of prison. And he said, Mike, I just want to go straight. I just want to have a house. I want to have a family. But right now he can't afford it. But you know what? There is power. There is power in one. You. Individual power. That when partnered with other like-minded people, the power grows, and so does our faith. So what do you believe in? What are your values? You know, I know we can stand in silent groups of people and express ourselves, but do you believe in your morals and values enough to state them in the public square like the Bible tells us to do? In places where people may disagree with you? Do you stand on facts or do you stand on emotions? Are you assured of your values? Do you feel strong enough about your values to stick to them, especially when things get tough. Another thing people have a tendency to say is, you know what, don't worry about it, God will take care of it. But what I found is that God will not do something that we can do for ourselves. Maybe he's already put things in place for us, I'm not really sure. But we have to do our part. And this is why. And for you, I don't know what you believe the right thing is. I only know what God tells us to do. And then I listen to that still small voice because this was written over 2,000 years ago. It's the oldest account of what happened. The Quran was written 600 years after Christ died. How many people 600 years later were going to remember what happened? Maybe one of the things God put in place was the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence was voted on and unanimously approved. Everybody agreed to it July 4th of 1776. It took almost 12 years for the Constitution to be signed. The Constitution wasn't voted on and approved and signed until June 21st, 1788. 
Maybe it took that long for our forefathers to hear and move on God's voice. I don't know. I wasn't there. What I do know is that it was written and unanimously agreed upon over 250 years ago, and it still stands today. The Declaration of Independence goes something like this, and I just pulled a part out of it in Congress, July 4th, 1776. The unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Amen. The Bible tells us about each one of these unalienable rights. Each one of them that we have are biblical and in the Bible. Take Luke 11, 21. It says, when a strong man, fully armed, guards his own house, his possessions are safe. It's not my word to try out in the Bible. What I do know, you have the power of one. You are the only one that can stand for what you believe in, especially when you go to the polls. If you're not sure how powerful the power of one is, just take a little look at history. One time there was a man, one man. He set out all by himself. He decided that he was going to take on the establishment. He recruited a few like-minded people, thought he was going to put together this group. And with him, he already started changing the world. He found these like-minded people that worked together, and they all changed the world. The funny thing is, this guy was homeless. Seldom had a regular meal to eat. He was a vagabond, but the thing is, is he kept doing it because this is what he believed in. A lot of the places that this guy went, he was unwelcomed by the majority. They would have just assumed kicked him out, and they did. Kicked him out of some cities. Those of them that welcomed him were the oppressed. They were the people who had to deal with inflation. They were dealing with shortages, and they were being used by the government as serfs. Or I should say the lucky ones were. They were even religiously oppressed. But one man changed the entire world. Just one man, a carpenter's son. But he wasn't the only one that changed the world. And if you look in Luke, Chapter 5, verse 17. For it is by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more, they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one. Jesus Christ. Therefore, as, the, as by the offense of of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. <laughs> For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. One man made a difference. So what do you want to do? Take a look around you. Jerry's feeding people in council bluffs. He's one person. He's the power of one. Patrick put together today's picnic because he's helped like-minded people by like taking it to the streets. Jerry's going to be helping today. Taking it to the streets is going to be helping Patrick with the picnic today. Shannon, one person, she put together last week's trip to the zoo. She changed things. 
she made things happen. We had a great time. It's the power of one. What would have happened if Jesus did not do what he did? What if David didn't slay Goliath? What if Mary chose not to have Jesus? What would have happened? These are all single incidents, one person that had the power, the power of one. Had David not slain Goliath, had all of these things not happened, these one single people step up, then maybe God's people, us, would be serfs right now. We would be holding to a Lord that is not the Lord our God. It may have been the Lord of Council Bluffs or the Lord of Omaha. You make a difference in everything that you do. So don't think you can't make the difference of just one person. And Ruth and I are doing that. Or at least we're trying to make a difference in the world. Maybe we can't make a difference in the world, but maybe we can make a difference in our world. And how do you think we did it? One step at a time. We put one foot in front of the other. We stood on our values when it hurt. There were times when things happened and people questioned who we are, what we stood for. And we said, we've got to stand for what we stand for, no matter how much we're questioned, no matter how many people come against us. But are you willing to do that? There was a recent election in Iowa where the winner won by six votes. So what would have happened if those six people stayed home that day and they didn't vote? The election would have been different. So what do you know about the candidates? What do you really know about the people that you're voting for? Do they hold the same values that you hold? And I'm going to back up and digress. Do you know what your values are? Do you know what the Ten Commandments are? Do you know what God says? Do you know what God is telling you? when it comes to things like this. What are your values? And those people that you're voting for, do they hold the same values that you do? Do you have values that you're willing to get off the couch and stand up and fight for? Before you vote, one of the things that I ask that you do is to research the candidates. There's a lot of information out there. And at the very top of this paper, this is from My Faith Votes. And if you want to know about your candidates, right underneath that, for those of us over the age of 40, you have to hold it so far out to read it. It says that you can read about your candidates. What do they stand for? How have they voted in the past? And how do they connect with your values? And my thing is, is not whether you like them or not. But are they carrying your values forward? Right now, what I'm finding is that there's some people who are running for office that aren't Christians. Do you want a Christian in office, or are you okay with just having anybody in office that potentially could sway with the wind? There's also people that are in office or running for office that say they're Christians, but they're really not. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. And they usually don't have your best interest at heart. They have their best interest at heart. And this is what you find out when you start looking at them. Looking at what they've done in the past. What is your... Have you ever spent time with your candidates to look them in the eye? and ask them the hard questions. How do they feel about things? I want to ask you one other thing because I thought this was kind of interesting. Is anyone in here willing to get a, give up one month of your wages? Are you willing to give up one month 
of the money that you make? Because right now, inflation is at 8.5%. Do you realize that that is one month of your pay? Multiply 8.5 times 12 months. That's one month of your pay that we've given up. So what do you believe in? I've run into many people who can't answer that question because I want to find out. If not necessarily, I want to find out from you. I want to find out from the younger generation. What do they believe in? What are their values? What are their morals? And what I'm finding out is I have a big job ahead of me, and so do you. I want to find out what's going on. And when I ask people that, I get a deer in the headlights look. <laughs> It's no different if I ask how people stand on the topic or the question of Christianity. I have some people I ask questions and they kind of give me a deer in the headlights look. This is America. I don't have to worry about that in America. We have freedom of religion. There's no one going to come after me. There's no one going to persecute me for freedom of religion. In some places here in the United States, people are being persecuted for their religion. They're probably closer than we think. What is your stance on Christianity? If you were asked to choose, what would you choose? And we don't know what the choices are for Christianity. I know what they've done in other countries. You can see it. You can watch it on the news. In every situation, know what you stand for and figure out what are you willing to fight for? Are you willing to fight for your rights? Are you willing to fight for your freedom? Are you willing to fight for your neighbor? Are you willing to fight for the people who cannot take care of themselves? Are you willing to fight for Christianity? There's an election coming up November 8th, and you need to decide how you're going to vote. And then you need to decide who you're voting for. God is good. He is really good. Listen to that still small voice and move forward. Always keep moving forward. Take time to do the, God, the right thing, and God will reward you for your efforts as long as you do it for the right reason. If you would, pray with me. Lord, now more than ever, reach out to each and every one of us. Show us your path, your will, and your ways. We stand ready to do what you ask of us. Help us make the right decision in the coming weeks. We know if we have peace about our decisions, it was your will. We ask you to watch over each and every one of us. Hold us up and keep us protected. Thank you for blessing the ministry of the Avenue. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we want to give you the opportunity to get closer to God. But you can only do that by giving your life over to Him. By handing it over and letting Him steer your ship. Today's the day. And there's no time like the present. If this is your moment and you're being called, just pray, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. We believe if you've said that simple prayer, you've been born again. Get into a Bible-based church for those people online and keep coming back. Let me know if you want to be baptized on the 16th of November. If you want to have a more private ceremony, let me know and we will arrange it. And before we go do the picnic, let's sing our last song. <laughs>